Welcome back to our uh, reflection on the Gospel. Um, we're reflecting today on the Gospel of the 21st Sunday of the year. Just before we begin, we mentioned last, have been mentioning a number of times, that we'll put a, um, a sheet on our website, which is lexiodivina.com.au, that might help you in your journey to God. So today we're putting on a, a sheet that's entitled Love God, Life in Christ, that focuses on the fact that Christ has to be at the centre of our, of our Christian living. We invite you now to listen to the Gospel. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he stern sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This particular text is a watershed in the Gospel of Matthew. Up until now, Jesus has been a wonder worker. Um, the term Christ has been used about him. But here for the first time, the disciples acknowledge that he is um, the Christ. So Jesus asks, who am I? Who is, who is the Son of Man? That's saying, who am I? And he gives those, those possibilities. Matthew includes Jeremiah. The other Gospels don't have Jeremiah in there, but he's got a bit of a link with Jeremiah uh, throughout the Gospel. Um, but the real focus is on Peter. And part of what is done here is only in Matthew, and it was Matthew has a number of incidents that are only in his Gospel. Jesus refers to Peter here in his full name, Simon, son of John. Okay, so it's, it's a fairly formal sort of thing. And really what he's, um, he's doing here is there are three things involved. The revelation from the Father to, to, to um, Peter, um, the foundation of, of the community, and the authority that is given, um, given to him. Um, I think the word church is take, worth taking up. It only occurs here and in chapter 18, which is in one of the Sundays coming up. And basically it just means the local assembly. Um, it's a word that contrasts synagogues, synagogues and church. And it just means that that community that Jesus has um, gathered around him. The confession of Peter, the Messiah, as I mentioned, the first time it's actually made a profession from the disciples, but also the Son of God. And that too is important for Matthew. It occurred in the temptations, if you are the Son of God, do this, uh, the baptism and the transfiguration. Uh, you might remember when Jesus walked on the water, the disciples said, you are the Son of God. And then as time goes by on Calvary, if you are the Son of God, come down from the, uh, from the cross. So Son of God is something that certainly um, um, has a, a significant place. The keys of the kingdom, that's a, an allusion to the Old Testament. I've mentioned before that Matthew is the gospel that, that focuses particularly on the Jewish traditional origin of the Catholic community. And it's a reflect there of a, a person called Eliakim in the Old Testament who was made the steward over all the royal property, as it were. So really, Peter is not just the spokesperson of the community, he, he really is the leader of the community. So it's a, a significant role that has been given to him. So he's the rock on which the foundation, uh, the, on which the church um, is built. Mm. The binding and the loosing, 
that that's the authority really um, and it's given to Peter here um, in chapter 18 and a few Sundays it's given to the local community but here um, it's given to Peter yes. as as the leader and I think that's really quite significant and the last point about it is the messianic secret which is a mark and concept but um, really while the disciples look to have made the whole journey next Sunday's gospel will show that they didn't <laughs> that they didn't understand Steve. so the message not to tell people that Jesus was the Messiah is because even the disciples hasn't got the message of what sort of Messiah he was so I think they're the key mm. things that came through um, to me um, I think traditionally we've seen the Pope here but the Pope isn't mentioned and, and is not really relating to the text the church's tradition has, has brought that about but what I think is clear is that Peter is given a lead role and people sometimes say well um, Jesus didn't found a church well he founded a community uh, with a leader which is basically what church is <laughs> now it's not the structure that we have now but I think certainly Jesus envisaged that what he had begun would be carried on and he'd set up a system so that it would be carried on. Uh. I thank you for that, David. It's yes. just given me some insights that, you know, that just reframes the whole story. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, even the words, the proclamation of Peter, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, and I've been thinking about that in a week. That's great, isn't it? That you can say that and you'll give it as an underpinning of the meaning yeah, of that. Yeah. But in itself, it's not enough to say, is it? Yeah. There's got to be more than that. And that's how that becomes who we are in the living of our lives. And it's very easy to, to utter the words, but it's much more difficult to put those words into action. Yes. And, and I think that's been the, the thing that's been coming to my mind. Yeah. Mm. I suppose to me it's that core question, who do you say I am? And um, to me, although this is a moment of founding of the church, and I feel like this is a good day for Peter, because Peter's going to have a lot of really tough ones coming up as well. The next day. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like, yay, Peter, you got through today, that's great. But it's based to me on this core personal response that uh, the church or that is founded in this, relationship with Jesus who do you say I am and to me that's absolutely core to all of our lives because I suppose I've been thinking about um, so in relation to Jesus who am I in relation to Jesus like it's once you ask someone who do you say I am it's a two-way relationship mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that is occurring yeah. so uh, to me this is one of those core percolating questions and because it's dynamic who I say you are, the son of the living God, but who are you for me in my life no, today, no. in my relationships, my community? Yeah. So it's an ongoing, yes. like all great relationships, yes. Yes. How ongoing do I relate to, to you, you today. Yeah, right. yeah. That's right. Okay, thanks for that. Thank you. Uh, we invite you now to look at the text. Remember that um, it, it's Jesus speaking to you, not just repeating what we have said or thinking about what we have said necessarily, but what do you find in the text that uh, could be Jesus speaking to you? We invite you now to listen to the text again. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Yes, my, my thoughts centred around the, the church. Uh, people say yes to Jesus, but no to the church. Mm. And I didn't point it out, but in the text that we've just read, Jesus doesn't say that you're the foundation of the church. He says you're the foundation of my church. Mm. In other words, that really to have Jesus is to have the church. So I, I felt I might reflect on the, you know, just whether I'm looking at the church sufficiently because it's a very human institution and I think sometimes we have to look carefully to recognise Jesus within it but certainly Jesus is there. For me it's the question about but who do you say I uh, am? Um, and I think if I suppose if I was challenged more on that perhaps the church would be closer to that yes, uh, yeah. life spring Mm. That well, yes. that water that never um, runs dry. Mm -hmm. I want to ask myself, what does it mean? Because I was really taken by this, David, of what Jesus found was a community with a leader. Yes. Now, what does that mean for me? But the other part of it, I think, which is crucial, who sits at the very heart of that community and not to lose sight of this Jesus? I'd just like to reflect on that. Thank you for that. We invite you now to um, reflect on the, on the text and try to draw something from it. The big issue in, in working with the scriptures is turning words into deeds. And uh, what we're asking you now to do is what action can you take uh, to implement something um, from this particular text? We need the grace of God to do anything that relates to God in a serious way. So let us pause for a moment to pray and to ask God for the courage and the strength that we need to implement what we have us, that we have chosen to do. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you giving your time to be with us, but it's for a good cause. It's in order that we can meet in the scriptures. And I think that's something that we really need to rediscover in our church today, that Jesus is as really there in the scriptures as he is in the Mass and the Eucharist, in a different way, but as really there. We conclude now, we conclude now by uh, reading the, the prayer, the collect from the liturgy of the um, 21st Sunday. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.